work of the Spirit of God is to transform those traditions with the light of Christ. Thank you. When he was doing his doctorate degree, he rarely saw me. I entrusted him to the Spirit, you know. So. My name is Innes Daniel, born at Morganston Mission in 1936. That's too long ago. My parents were missionaries for more than 40 years, first in Nyasaland, which became Malawi. Then they uh, moved to uh, Mashonaland at Morganster, which was seen as the biggest mission station in the world at that point in time. And uh, that's me, a little uh, unruly fellow, because I, I was only chasing adventure at that, uh, at that stage, and my mother was a music teacher. She was a live wire. She was all over the mission station. She did uh, music lessons, language lessons. Shona to the incoming missionaries, English to uh, the African ministers. And, uh, and then in the weekend she would take her light chair, walk miles down into the rural areas, to the villages, and preach and meet the people. And when she comes home, then she sits down at the piano, and then we have people from the mission coming, and we all spend an evening singing Alexander hymns, you know, like the ivory palaces, and my Lord is calm, and so on. My favorite is always, I come to the garden. We had a, a wonderful time growing up there uh, in terms of freedom, going into nature uh, from the back stoop of where I, I lived, I could roam freely and go and see wildlife. During the recession, my father employed the males of a whole village. They came to work in the printing press and they gave him the nickname of Chiri Samuru which was the, the, the royalty king of the Rosi in early, earlier years. He was called Chiri Samuru, which means literally looking after the calves of the cattle, which means that he was a protective uh, a ruler. So they came and said, we want to build your son. They knew I liked hunting. Uh, we'll, we build him a, a house. And so they built me a, a, a rondavo. I went and lived there during the week, and they taught me Shona, and at night we would hunt. So I became the provider. I would shoot little antelope, diker, and steenbuck, and so forth. So everybody was happy because uh, they would eat meat, and we would have adventure to, uh, together. And that enabled me to, to pick up the language uh, from an early uh, stage in my life, and to get familiar with people. And that played a big role eventually in my research. I would not do research if it meant only sitting in a library. I wanted to live amongst the people. J. H. Barfink, my professor in, in missiology at the Free University, I, I studied with him. I was the last student. Uh, he died just after my comps. The encounter between Christianity and non-Christian religions this, this man's interpretation really impressed me. It was always very, very positive in the sense that it's not just all heathenism. It's holy ground where God has been relating to people that you have to treat with respect. And if you bring in the Christian message, you have to care about and be with the people and live amongst them. Otherwise, you're, you're pretending. And um, so, and that's what my mom and others were doing anyway, but uh, I, I had to be told that in, 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 in theological terms. He was on his deathbed. He called me and I walked in there and uh, he actually said I must kneel in front of his bed and he put his arms around my shoulders and he gave me a blessing for my work in Africa. And two days later he died. That gave me uh, something, an anchor in Africa. When things went hard during the liberation struggle, 
during conflicts that were always there. And often when I thought of just walking away from it, I thought of Baafeng's blessing and that, that kept me. Sixty-five, studying in the Pena churches, uh, how they interpret Christianity, but specifically how they relate the Christian message to their own traditional religion and, and, and uh, what their theology looks like in practice. <laughs> And cannot see God without seeing God through his own culture. Now, if Jesus is preached in Africa, he must live in African culture. He has to dance with me. He has to sing with me. He has to drum with me for me to see God. <laughs> Professor Daniel is the only man who I think became a Moses type like man in the independent churches. The mainline churches, they could not even like to associate with us because we were not regarded as churches, but only sex or syncretistic churches. <laughs> That was probably the biggest adventure, the adventure of finding entry because I settled in an area where there were virtually no whites and uh, that uh, pretty quickly became, uh, you know, uh, difficult uh, because the war, uh, the liberation struggle started in, uh, towards the end of 65 and it affected my work because I was trying to uh, go through the barriers with the traditional religionist people, particularly the High God cult, with its headquarters in the Matopo Hills. On the way to Matopo Hills, Bondo Mukojo, and he was my friend. It took me two years of regularly seeing Bondo and discussing the going to Matonjeni and him trying to persuade the senior spirit medium to open the gateway. The one thing that no white man was ever allowed to do was to, to penetrate and to study the high god cult from inside. Because in 1896, when there was uh, the rebellion, I mean, 10% of the white uh, people were, were killed. And that war was waged uh, under the directives of the oracular pronouncements make, made at, at the shrines. And some of the priests and well, as well as senior spirit mediums were executed. As a result, uh, the, the high god cult went underground and they never allowed uh, uh, white people. Vondok was a local Munyai messenger of the high god cult. After all that preparation, off I go to the Matopo Hills with Vondo Mukojo to see if I can speak to the, uh, to the high god. When we got there, priestly colony people were all very friendly, open, because Vondor told them a lot of stuff. I, I thought, well, it's going to be easy. God is going to allow me. That same evening, I pitched my tent, a huge storm, electrical storm, broke out, tore my tent, and the, the senior uh, uh, priest had his roof blown off that night. Now, the next morning, everybody was sullen. Uh, and they, they openly stated God had probably now indicated that a, a, an outsider cannot be allowed. Sorry, we we will have to have a sign from God. He 
you can imagine after two and a half years how depressed I was. Well, I kept relating to the people for more than a week. There was absolutely no give. I told them, okay, uh, the next day I was going to leave. I was lying in the shadow of my truck, resting, and, and actually feeling very sorry for myself. Uh, when Vondel came running, he said, you know, there's a hawk sitting over there on top of that gomo, that mountain. He says, and uh, the priests are asking, can I not shoot it for them? because uh, it has eaten all their chickens. Now, you know, I immediately realized this might be the moment. Now, I've got the scope on a 3006 at 90 yards. I mean, that is not the most difficult shot if you can keep stable. But I couldn't, I was, I was too tense. And though I pulled the shot and the, the, the hawk uh, flew off and started circling higher and higher above us. And you could hear the size of the priest to find a moving object like, like a bird in the scope. It was difficult. So, but as I lifted it, it just came into full view. I instinctively pulled and it came spiraling down and fell in front of the main priest. And he grabbed it and he picked it up and his brother, brother said to him, ah, did you see that? So he started plucking the feathers and first scolded the hawk and then said to me, he says, I'm going to send a messenger up to the, to the shrine and he will ask God, can you attend? They dance and sing uh, often for several hours before they, they attend. Towards 11 o'clock midnight is, is when they would go to the shrine itself. It was getting dark already. Vondo walks into my tent. He says, Mwari has said, it's okay, but you don't take any of your European gadgets, your rings and watch. Says, but you know what? That little machine that you use to tape record, he says, I'm sure Mwari will not object to that. Put that under your arm and don't let the priest <laughs> see it because I know you want to know exactly what Mwari is saying. And sure enough, 12 o'clock at night, you walk, clap hands, Bedzi, Ziva, Shoko, which is the praise names of the, the, the ancestors who had been involved in the cult before. And then this, this whole conversation with the high god evolves. First I get scolded, of course, because as a white I'm not supposed to be there, but because of Vondo and our friendship, I'm allowed to attend. And then the whole uh, political situation of the war and God says to me, he says, I'm going to fight you if, if you don't change your stance on the land that you've taken because he said, you are my sister's sons, which is a, 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 a very positive relationship, uh, uh, you know. And, um, but he said, you have taken the land and so you've abused your privileges as a sister's son and I want you to take my message to the district commissioner and let him introduce it to the gover uh, government so that we can have peace talks and redistribution of the land, then we will stop the war immediately. And that's what I did. There he puffed his cheeks and said, that has got nothing to do with the whole matter. I said, sir, you're making a big mistake. And the God was complaining about European influence which trod on African customs and that there was a lot of disrespect of, 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 of African customs and things like that which uh, made me realize from their side what it looked like. It was a profound experience of like homecoming to remain close to the people and to be drawn into their living as, as a relative, as a friend. And 
sometimes you, you, you feel very good about it and then you, you just again realize it's all a matter of grace from beyond and you, you cannot claim it, it's a given from beyond.